Yo, what's good? You already know it's Mastermind MMA, and uh, the Croatia Fight Night card just wrapped. Rothwell versus Dos Santos and Junior Cigano Dos Santos comes out with the win. Uh, I did a this morning when I woke up. I did a fight. Pick an analysis breakdown, and uh, I touched lightly on the. I touched lightly on the unlikely, unlikely situations that would play out, and uh, it was pretty much unlikely. Not unlikely, I shouldn't say that, but it, it's what I would hope to see from JDS. Is what I saw. So. Let me start this off by saying all credit to Junior Dos Santos. He did a phenomenal job. He put on a clinic in that fight. My biggest thing, if you go back to the video and listen, my biggest worry for JDS was his chin. He got knocked out by Alistair in in December. So I thought it was going to be kind of like a Chad Mendes situation where he comes back soon to fight. And uh, his chin just isn't the same. But beginning of the, I'm just gonna get into it. Beginning of the first round, Ben Rothwell was coming out, coming out with his awkward stance, his switch stances that he came out with with uh, Josh Barnett. And you know, it's that kind of he's got his 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 shoulders all the way up and his hands kind of in a hook position, both hands, and he's kind of like bobbing his head a little bit you know he he uses really awkward feints I've never seen uh anything like it and when uh and Junior Dos Santos talk about a badass motherfucker I was talking about his boxing a little bit before saying how he was an elite boxer and uh you know my worry about JDS beforehand was never his ability it was his chin Due to what happened recently. But he came out and shut Ben down. Shut him down. He was landing nice. His his, his striking was precise. That was a beautiful display of precision striking and level changes. He was... He was... His jab was probably close to 100%. Every time he threw that jab, he was landing. He he would do he would send a jab to a body and a nice right to the face or a right or just do a body combo. And then uh Ben Rothwell wasn't really opening up that much, but the moments Ben Rothwell would open up, he would just start swinging pressure JDS into the fence and initiate clinch. Junior realized that. He saw that. And I think he got tagged with a few uh, counters. So what he would do is throw that jab uh, either at the head, mostly to the body, and decide if he wants to do a level change or the body. And he was beating Ben Rothwell's body. Ben Rothwell had some nice leg kicks. He was throwing some body kicks. But Junior was active, and at the second round... Junior was smart. Everything... You see, the first round arguably could go to Rothwell. And the thing is, Junior saw the... He he realized the moments that Ben was capitalizing on. And he adjusted. He would throw the jab, jab, right. And then get out the way. Get a, He would throw it and then get immediately out of the way for the counter. When Rothwell would pressure... JDS cut his angles and got away from the corner. He landed a big overhand right on Ben. You could tell Ben got tagged. I think it was overhand right. He landed something big on Ben. Ben got tagged. Hit it. He was trying to hide the fact he was hurt. Then JDS... 300 Leonidas, this is Sparta style, kicks Ben Rothwell and sends him flying across the cage, round over. So Ben Rothwell's eyes closing up 
and JDS continues to put on the clinic. His it was <clears throat> it was nothing but a boxing clinic he put on. And his movement was great. His his head movement was great. His his footwork was excellent. <clears throat> Him reading Ben, his he broke down Ben Rothwell. People, <clears throat> I think a big reason why Ben Rothwell has been winning was his elevated ground game, his elevated submission game, and his awkward, awkward ass, unorthodox striking and stance. <clears throat> and Ben was doing a good job of switching stands. You know, it's it wasn't a Dominic Cruz, TJ Dillashaw dance way, but it'd be like step switch, step switch, step switch, step switch, center switch, center switch, throw, throw, throw. So he had like a slow down kind of step pattern with it. But Junior was very efficient. He was very select with his strikes. You, I saw no signs of any fatigue. Ben Rothwell, he looked like he was getting beat. Like, what did, I'm sure those body strikes were taking a lot out of him. But he kind of looked gas, man. And he went in a desperation mode. No, but he didn't go in for takedown. Because he, I, I forgot, it was at the end of the fourth or fifth. He threw, like, a wild combo that wasn't even... I'm talking about Rothwell. It wasn't even on point. Motherfucker sent his head swinging in the fence. He crashed in head first into the cage. Junior laughed and then dapped him up. He was like, yo, you good? And then pop, 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 pop. And, you know, Junior, there's only real one time I could see Junior loading up. But, you know, Junior was on point, put himself into, you know, if you checked out my other video, I just woke up and I couldn't say contention for some reason. I was like, contention, contention, it was like something had my tongue. But Junior put himself in title contention again. He was he was in it with Overheem lost to Overheem. He just beat the guy that beat Overheem. They gotta run that back now. For a title. And Junior did a a, a phenomenal job. Hats off to JDS. I uh I thought Rothwell's confidence would play a lot into this into this fight being used undefeated since 2013 fighting out the red corner junior did open up as a favorite on the betting lines so junior looked good he looked like the world beater jds and uh he didn't have one of his main coaches with him for the overheam fight and he did now, and I definitely noticed the difference. I definitely noticed more confidence, more, less hesitation. Props to Big Ben for eating those shots. Junior caught him clean a lot of times. Junior, Junior's boxing was in, in, in incredible. And when, I think it was during the third round, you saw Junior in his bag, bro. You saw that kind of, that look in his face. Like, you know, when I, I you guys know that I'm, I'm a boxer, I, I, I used to box. And uh, when, when you're hitting pads and you're hitting the speed bag, when, when you're hitting a speed bag, it's not more of, it's not your eye looking and you tr willfully trying to hit the speed bag by eye, hand-eye coordination. It's, it's more of, a timing, a timing and pattern of your hand rotation. And it's like, so basically the timing that I have on the speed bag is when it hits, it hits up, then bounces, hits the other side, bounces back, hits the other side, and then your fist is there again. So when, when you kind of get in that pattern and in that flow and when you're hitting pads and you're like, yo, I'm fucking phenomenal right now and you're hitting the punching bag and you're feeling clean and crisp 
and your technique is good. That was JDS. You saw that face. He was like, all right, I'm in my zone. Let me not overthink it, and let me just stay in this zone. It was flowing, man. He was flowing with his striking. He, no jujitsu, no wrestling. No, he said it, he said it in, the end of, in the end of the interview, in the post fight, in the octagon. He was like, I'm a boxer, guys. Fuck jujitsu and wrestling. He didn't say fuck it, but... And he was smart, he played up to the crowd, he learned a little Croatian phrase, said it to the crowd, said, I give the crowd all the credit, building up a fan base, and, because you gotta keep in mind, this is a new market, this is the first, and, uh, the only guy I could think of off top, that's Croatian, is Mirko Krokop and Stipe Miocic, if Stipe's Croatian, if I have that right. So that just really opened up a, a, a market to UFC and uh, JDS being a vet, him taking out Rothwell, who's a top guy, who took out the guy that just beat JDS. I, I said in my other interview, this is, JDS is going to come in top shape. I'm not, not another interview, another video. I said JDS was going to come into top shape because he knows what's on the line. He wouldn't take this fight unless he knew what was on the line. I think if Rothwell caught him clean, it would have been trouble. But Ben didn't. And it was... Ben came in looking good. And it was just JDS's... It was all JDS's tools, skills, and technique, footwork, and movement. That just... If, if this fight went on more than five rounds or it was five, five, 25 minutes straight through, JDS might have gotten the finish. He put a uh, exclamation point on every round outside of the first at the end of each round. All props to JDS. I say you either run that back with Overeem or... Or give him the shot, man. I think I think if anyone's earned a shot, it was JDS. Especially after that showing. And he... JDS is 32. You see, in my head, I always perceived him as older. Because he's been in the game for a hot minute. And... He... Looked back to form. He looked sharp. He looked... He looked evolved, man. Like... I, I, I can't speak on anything outside of his, his striking and boxing. He was even throwing some nice spin kicks to the body. Anyway, all all shout out to JDS. Sigano! The, the crowd was chanting Sigano. Like, it, 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 it was good for Junior. I'm happy for him. So, going down to the co-main... Which was a good fight. I was a big fan of the fight. It was against let me let me get his name. Oh, quick story. This guy that was in the co-main event, not Gabriel Gonzaga, but the I think his name is Kevin Lewis. I, I gotta check. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely Derek Lewis. There we go, Derek Lewis. Yo, Derek. For some reason, I got Derek Lewis co- confused with Corey Anderson by by name. By name, for some reason, I thought Derek Lewis was Corey Anderson because I saw him. I think it was the Wonder Boy fight or one of those cards, and uh, I, it was just you know one of the things when your brain just does a swap. But the I was talking before in the heavyweight division, there really isn't someone who is young and coming in and taking the game by storm in the heavyweight division. I think it's this guy, Derek Lewis. I think he's the Anthony rumble Johnson of the heavyweight division, except he might be the heaviest hitter. If you saw what put Gabriel Gonzaga out that that's a scary motherfucker. Derek Lewis, the way he knocks down, starts beating his chest Beating the canvas and then just like looks at you like a motherfucking crocodile. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? 
I expect like some hiss or like some roar or something. Because he is a monster. The Black Beast is his name. And uh, I don't, I can't think of anything more fitting than that. He, he throw, he threw, opened up with like a head kick, did a great job. I, he's very entertaining. I think now he definitely made his way in the top 15. Heavyweight is not that deep of a division. So he could definitely make his way to the top five in title if he keeps this up, which which I think he will. I'm not saying he won't take any losses, but I really think this guy's the next up in the heavyweight division. So, yeah, guys, that's uh, if I remember. So basically what happened before that, I, I know there was a fight that the doctor stopped and uh, there was a heavyweight fight with uh, what's his name? Tim Johnson and the the guy. Marcin Tybura or, or I'm not sure how you say his name in his UFC debut. He that was a that was a decent fight and then I I watched that and I was like, "You know what? It's kind of slow. I was just waiting on it. Was looking there's nothing much I could do another video on. I was just kind of waiting to do this video. I was like, "Yo, you know what? I'm just about to run to the tobacco store real quick." And uh, grabbed me some hookah, some shisha. And then I, I lit up a hookah session and I continued watching the fights. But I uh, came in around the... It's only like 10 minutes away from my house. Like a round trip to go there, pick it, come back. So I uh, came back and there was the Curtis Blades versus Francis Ganu, Naganu. And uh, I missed most of that, but uh, but I I saw the the doctor come in and stop, and that was like a little controversy. Like, no, nah, I could go on, and uh, that kind of sucks for that guy. That you know, for Curtis Blades, that the doctor stops it, and it's a TKO. And but for the safety of the guy, I get it. You know, just kind of got to take that loss on the chin or on the eye. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you just got to go go on with life. But, you know, it was a slow card. Uh, I shouldn't say slow. It was good. I, every every fight card I, I, I watch, unless it's really good fights, I kind of, it's almost just like a countdown until the main event or a co-main if something's interest, interesting. But, uh, yeah, guys. So, JDS looks phenomenal. I think Junior Dos Santos Lined himself up for uh, a number one content, a title shot fight, like fighting who gets the title shot, and uh, seeing seeing what happened here, I definitely want to see them run it back with, with Overeem, cause that fight wasn't that entertaining, and Overeem got finished by Rothwell, and Junior just went five, all right, four dominant rounds against Big Ben. Ending his win streak and uh, in, in enjoying it, you know, JDS is one of those guys that's put a lot into his sport, into the sport, and uh, he he's one of the guys I want to see him prosper. Uh, JDS were doom fight would be very entertaining, and uh, yeah, guys, you already know it's Mastermind MMA.